Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares. Welcome to another edition of What's in the Bag, Jay? Now this is where I pick six movies from my collection that I've never seen, write their names on a piece of paper, throw them in the bag, draw one out at random, and do a short review. Now, in this week's segment, there will be the new rules in effect. That's why you can see I have my trusty uh, Freddy vs. Jason die here. And returning from last week is Blood Trails and Left in Darkness. Now, the four new movies joining them this week will be Antidote, Swarmed, The Tenement, and Stripperland. Now, special thanks to Eric from Last Venom 76 for sending me Blood Trails, Stripperland, and The Tenement. Can't wait to throw them in the mix and see what happens. I'm going to take all of the pieces of paper, throw them in the bag, like we normally do. Give the bag a good tussle. Reach my hand in the bag. Draw one out at random. And we have Left in Darkness. So you know what that means, guys. It is time to do implement the new rules. So we're going to set this one aside so I can watch it and do a review for you guys. The rest of them will be sitting side by side, of course. The movies that we have left are Swarmed. Blood Trails, Stripperland, The Tenement, and Antidote. Now, for the new rules. I'm going to take my trusty Freddy vs. Jason die. I'm going to roll it, and whatever number I land on is the number of names that I draw out of the bag to come back for next week. One. All right, Let's give the bag another good tussle. Uh, let's see. Draw one out at random, if I can get to one of them. And it is Antidote. Now, the rest of these movies will go back into the piles. Who knows, maybe they'll come back at some time or another, or if you guys do feel like voting and one movie gets an overwhelming vote, maybe I'll just do a review for you guys. You never know. So I will be back shortly with a review for Left in Darkness. Later. Well, I'm back. I just watched Left in Darkness. And here are my thoughts. Now, Left in Darkness is a 2006 film, which runs approximately 85 minutes, and is directed by Stephen R. Monroe. Now, he was responsible for The Exorcism of Molly Hartley. Now, I've seen The Haunting of Molly Hartley, which I quite liked. I do own the second one, but I haven't watched it yet. He did I Spit on Your Grave, Parts 1 and 2, the remakes, a movie called It Waits, which, I'll be honest, I didn't really care for it the first time I watched it. I did give it another try, and actually really enjoyed it. And House of Nine. Now this stars Monica Kina as Celia. She was in the Night of the Demons remake. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason, and Snow White, A Tale of Terror. This has David Anders as Donovan. He was in The Revenant, which was actually really good. And the TV movie of Children of, of the Corn, which I happen to enjoy. I know a lot of people don't, but it is... I do like it. This also has Travis Van Winkle as Corby, 
Uh, he was in the Friday the 13th remake. Blood Work. Rites of Passage. And a movie I happen to be quite fond of called 247 Degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> and last but not, certainly not least, it has Tim Thomerson, who plays Joe, who is a, a favorite of mine. Now, he, of course, was in Fade to Black, one of my favorite uh, slashers of all time. Uh, Transfers 1 through 6, Near Dark, and the Doll Man franchise. He's just an awesome actor. He had a very... It wasn't a small part. It was kind of like a... It wasn't a huge part, but his character was kind of important to the overall story. Now, um, here is a very short synopsis. Uh, Celia is a little girl in the beginning. Um, she is raised by her grandparents, which her grandfather is Tim Thomerson. Her mother dies giving birth to her, so she doesn't know her, but she visits her grave. And she seems to see dead people, which you find out later. There's a reason for that. She also seems to have a guardian angel who is protecting her throughout her life. Uh, fast forward many, many years later, she is at a sorority party. Um, she has slipped a roofie and basically um, gang raped and killed. Now, the rest of the movie basically takes place in what most people would consider, I guess, purgatory. Uh, not necessarily um, heaven, but not necessarily hell. And you come to find out, or you come to realize that some of the characters in her life weren't exactly who they appear to be, if that makes any sense. You'd have to watch it. Um, that's basically where I'm going to stop. There is a ton more to this film. Um... But, yeah, I'm going to let it go there and kind of let you guys make up your own mind. Uh, this was made for $1.2 million and filmed in Los Angeles. Now, what did I think of the film? It definitely left me a little dry. I'm not going to lie. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be like another movie, which I mentioned earlier, that this director did called It Waits, where I really didn't care for it the first time I watched it, but then I sat down and watched it again and kind of enjoyed it. I'm not sure if that's what's going to happen with this one, but um, I'm definitely willing to give it another try somewhere down along the line. I'm not sure if it was, if I wasn't in the mood for this type of story. I know I have some definite cons, um, and here they are. The acting from Monica Kina is dreadful absolutely dreadful and she constantly got on my nerves uh, surprisingly enough really wasn't that happy with Tim Thomerson in this one either and I think he's a fantastic actor I think it has a lot to do with the script and just the overall vibe of the film uh, another con is there are a ton of plot holes in this movie um, you could drive a car through them Generally speaking, I tend to suspend disbelief when it comes to horror movies. But with this one, it was just to the point where it started getting on my nerves. Now, you guys, when you watch it, I'm sure you'll know of the potholes of which I speak. And it has a lot to do with the dead and what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. And I'll kind of leave it at that. And finally, my last con is, and I don't want this to sound like too big of a con, but it was almost like a very light horror 90210. Now, I am a 90210 fan. I used to watch it back in the day, always loved it, watched it with my wife every week. But um, just the overall, just the pretty people and wooden acting and all that just kind of left me dry with this one 
Um, not gonna lie, I wasn't too big of a fan of this movie. Um, I think if I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it a six. I'm not really sure if I can recommend it. It is a supernatural horror film that is very light on horror, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, definitely, if it seems like something you're interested in, definitely check it out. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. And until next time, peace.